Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you for watching our Easter video, which obviously we're preparing for Easter. And so we are filled with great joy that you are with us. Let us begin by observing a quiet prayer while we have the ringing of the bell. Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. For our opening hymn, we sing the first verse of Jesus Christ is risen today. That's hymn number 457 if you have a hymnal at home. We continue our worship then as we follow the order for confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sin to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first scripture appointed for this day, the glorious day of Easter, is recorded in Isaiah chapter 26. The prophet writes, On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined, and he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. 
He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is written in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. St. Paul writes, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the Gospel of St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. For our hymn of the day, we sing... Jesus Christ is risen today, verses 2 and 3.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, you see, I took the podium away because I want you to be able to see the altar. The altar where we stand Sunday after Sunday, and, and maybe you're familiar with it, and maybe you're not familiar with it, but this altar is, is very special although I must confess it's, it's special in a way that can sometimes be seen as being kind of, um, oh, kind of gloomy, if you will. But you know what? We're all adults. I mean, it's Easter. We just have had Good Friday. Jesus died on the cross. I mean, you're, you're a mature Christian person. Jesus gave us life and salvation through his death. So, what I'm about to talk about shouldn't be any big deal for anybody. But I give you that disclaimer. Uh, some clips that you see, you may find disturbing. Well, Jesus had been hastily taken from the cross on that Good Friday, for, for that Sabbath was a, was a high holy one. See, that was the Sabbath of the Passover. And of course, the Sabbath started at at dark on, on that Good Friday, and so, so they went with haste, and, and they asked to take the body of Jesus and to lay it in a tomb, and Joseph of Arimathea was kind enough to, to give them a brand new tomb that was cut into the rock, and, and those kinds of tombs, and I don't know if you're familiar with that, but, but they would be cut into a rock, and there would be enough place if I were to move everything that were on this altar you could actually lay the body of a human being who was dead. And they hastily laid Jesus in the tomb. And that's why in many, many of our churches we have this altar, this kind of altar. This is called the Eastern Facing Altar. Oh, I could digress into all kinds of different things, but let me not do that. And, and if you were to look... And, and this is very stylized, as you probably all well know. In our chancel, well, we have this altar rail where sometimes people kneel to receive Holy Communion. But what it's also meant to look like is a stylized entrance to a cave, and you can't really see that on your film here. But at the front of our chancel, it's, it's shaped in, in an arc, uh, 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 a round arc as if it were the entrance to a cave. And again, albeit stylized. And we, with the women who come early in the morning, we see that the stone is not there. It has been rolled away. And we can see the place where they lay him. And his body is not there. You see, we came early this morning. Our hearts were filled with sadness. I suspect that no one had slept a bit all night. And yet... Those faithful women, they came to the tomb, tomb with the, with the, uh, the oils and, and the various spices for anointing the body of their beloved Jesus. And maybe they knew that there was going to be something very different. Because, I mean, I just can't believe how they would even have set out if they didn't somehow, in some way, think something is going to be different. Because, as they say, as they're walking, who will roll away the stone? I mean, I don't know about you, but if, if that were the case, and I would know that, well, I can't roll away that stone, I wouldn't have gone. Or maybe they thought that they would keep vigil outside at least, and they could say that, that they were there. Maybe that's the case. But much to their astonishment, when they came to the tomb, the, the stone was rolled away. And there was a young man, an angel, who said, he is not here. He is risen. And you know, in, in St. Mark's Gospel, which is where this Gospel is written today, we see three different points of time where Jesus has said, that the Son of Man must be handed over to the, to the chief priests and elders and, and must suffer and must die and on the third day rise again. And the disciples did not understand it. The disciples did not understand it. And, and as I have many times said, I, I don't castigate them. At one time I used to, but, but I don't anymore. Because Jesus was doing something that had never been done. Jesus was being doing something completely new. Oh yes, he 
He had raised some people from the dead. But, but for one to be crucified and then to rise from the dead after three days or on the third day? Never. You see, God was doing something new. God was doing something fantastic. Words fail to say what God was doing. God was loving the world so much that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And our gospel writings and our various writings throughout the New Testament are filled with all of these words and even in Isaiah all the way back, I don't know if you recall the words of our first lesson from Isaiah, on this mountain the Lord of hosts will destroy the veil that is cast over, on, over all people. On this mountain he will destroy death. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Well, you see, we believe that Isaiah was speaking of this mountain or, or hill on a hill far away. Or this, this mountain that we call Golgotha, the place of the skull. And God, today, is giving us new life. And God gives us that promise. No one can take that from us. St. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15 today, you know, he, he writes about all the people to whom Christ appeared after he had been raised from the dead. And all the witnesses. You know what I choose every Easter, really every day of my life? I choose to believe the witnesses. Those who saw, those women who were so terrified, well, yeah, they went away terrified, but, but they didn't stay quiet. They went and proclaimed, He is risen. Thanks be to God. I believe the witnesses. Yes, I know. That was thousands of years ago. 2,000, about to be exact. But the witness is still strong. And I believe them still. Thanks be to God. Jesus is alive in our hearts, in our souls. And the word of resurrection is on our lips. In his holy name, amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus, our crucified and risen Savior. Amen. We continue our worship as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. God has made us his people through our baptism in Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us approach our God in prayer. O Lord, we give you thanks for this day and for the salvation you grant through Christ. Uphold your church in every place and strengthen us as servants of mercy here at Zion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we give thanks for the many gifts you give, for the mercy you show us, for our church and early childhood center, for healing, for direction, for purpose. Let us be a blessing in the time, talents, and treasure we have for your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we thank you for the wonderful progress being made to fight the coronavirus. Help us all to do our part in working against the virus. 
be with all those who work to protect us and those who provide for our daily needs. Grant that vaccines may be delivered in good order to all who need them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with our nation and the nations of this world. Heal the divisions in our country. Grant us peace, grant us unity, grant us grace. Grant wisdom in government. Guide those who stray back to your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we pray for all who are ill at this time, especially those stricken with COVID-19, those struggling with abuse of any kind, those struggling with emotional issues, those in harm's way, both our military and civil servants. For victims of disaster, violence, and crime, for those bereaved, for those who are alone, those we think of now in our minds and hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, for the blessing of all who are worshiping on this day, enable us to see our participation in worship as the bold witness it is to this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, for all who have gone before us and are with you. Keep us steadfast in true faith until we are all together at the feast which has no end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And for our closing on this glorious day, we sing the final verse of Jesus Christ is risen today. Oh